Hey, we're here in the bowels of the Javits Center, talking with Mike Oming of Powers. How are you doing, sir? Great. It's been a pretty amazing day. It has. I was at your panel. It was great. The fans really liked the footage. So how does it feel to finally, after all this time, see the live-action Powers? Um, it's pretty amazing. It's hard to explain. But, uh, you know, imagine eating your favorite ice cream and having a back rub at the same time. Kind of feels like that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, you guys are shooting right now. Um, how surreal is it for you to see this all come to life? Like, your work uh, from the page translate to real life? Sure. The, the truly surreal thing is that it has a life of its own already. It's very much Powers, carrying the spirit of Powers, um, but it also is running parallel in its own development. Um, and that's been amazing to watch because now I'm taking cues from the show as well and bringing it back into the comic. You know, so we got a, a nice synergy thing going back and forth. Cool. Speaking of the comic, uh, you guys announced a new number one. Will that be a reboot or a reprint or a continuation of the story you've been telling? It's just a continuation. You know, a lot of times now uh, it's become more common that, that story arcs just start with another number one so that it shows people where you can jump on board. Um, it's, it is going to be a little tough for some Powers, new Powers fans if they don't know this is where you can start. You know, because if you start in the middle of you know, um, forever, it could be a very strange start for you. So we're trying to say to people here, come get this book because this is where you can start. You also mentioned in the panel that there is a lot of comic synergy with the show mm -hmm. and, you know, your work. Uh, and you're, you'll be including artists like Mike Allred uh, yes. and yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. Who are some of the other artists that will be heavily featured in the show? And what, in what capacity will we be seeing them? So we have, kind of have these, these, these different tiers of what the art is. So we have art that one of the main characters is drawing. And I'm doing a lot of that. There's pop culture stuff, which I'm doing some of the art for, for that as well. Um, but that's also where um, some of the other artists are coming in, like David Mack and David Marquez and Mike Allred. Um, within the Powers universe, in the show, there's a Powers comic book. So um, we're having other artists do the Powers comic book. Um, I'm doing some of the other stuff. There's a, 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 a sort of an animation style look because there's like a cartoon of Retro Girl because this is a, a fully developed world. So I'm doing the artwork for that. So we, we've actually got the artwork kind of categorized and how it's being used. So it's, it's not just randomly thrown out there. You know, like we have Allred doing the Silver Age comic for a reason. He's Mike Allred. He's going to do the Silver Age stuff. Uh, and David Marquez is doing a very modern thing. And David Mack is doing these amazing, beautiful um, gesture paintings of Retro Girl that are like these high-end art pieces that, that are featured in the show. So there's this trend in comic books right now where things are becoming more progressive, more diverse. And I feel like with you and Mr. Bendis working on Powers, you guys are kind of bringing that to Hollywood with mm. your choices in your cast. Yeah. How involved were you two in the casting of the show? And, you know, what do you think of this new movement in comics and yeah. entertainment? Um, well, we, we got to approve all of the actors and such and look over all of the, the footage. Um, it was amazing when we saw Susan, um, Susan's audition. Within 10 seconds, I was like, that's, that's Dina. Because it was all about the actor and the part. You know, because you can't get somebody who looks like Walker. That doesn't exist, uh, at least not who can act and stuff. You know? So we were always about finding the right actor for the right part, not carbon copies of the carriages walking around. Because that's putting the horse before the carriage, and it can quickly go off rails because you're looking for somebody of the right size or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and as far as that general movement goes, I, I love it and embrace it. Um, my, my wife is Japanese, and we often talk about how there's no representation of, of, of Asians, or there's very small representation of Asians within the sort of tight stereotypes of like either doctors or they're working ER or they're um, the secretary or something. Um, so we want to see more of that. Um, I think it's, a, it's kind of a, it's, it's a slippery slope when you're doing that for the purpose of doing that. But I think most people are just being smart and they're just looking for the right actors and no longer kind of putting boundaries on who you can or can't cast. Right. And I think that's all it is. And I want to see more of it. As do I. Yeah. <laughs> so finally, my last question. If you were in the world of powers, in fact, if you and Mr. Bendis were a superpowered team, ah. what do you think your powers would be? Um, Brian's would be to change the world because he likes to have his own sort of sense of time and um, communication skills. Mm -hmm. So I think his powers would be kind of like, that's not what happened, this is what happened. Um, and my superpower would be just to be everywhere early because uh, <laughs> I love beating my deadlines and being places early or else I get a neurotic uh, panic attack. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Mike, thank you so much. We look forward to the show. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. <laughs>